Hello, I'm Teresa Adams, and today we're here with Dr. Laura Lyons, and we're going to have a wonderful conversation today. Welcome, Dr. Lyons. Thank you. It is it's so nice pleasure. to have you here. It's... You are marvelous. Thank you. I've had such a great time uh, this afternoon chatting with you, and I hope we can Thank you so talk much. about some of the things we spoke about earlier today. I can't begin to tell you what an honor this is. Oh, thank you. To be here. Mm -hmm. I've always asked God to give me a, a forum to share my message. And what is that message? Well, before you share the mm -hmm. message, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Dr. Laura and how did we get to this place we are uh, Born July 15th, so I just had a birthday, my 75th, 1942 in Birmingham, Alabama. And I grew up between Birmingham and Selma. Okay. Uh, and it was the hardest time for blacks in America. Uh, the racism, uh, the poverty, I grew up in a shack. Uh, I remember sleeping on a mattress that my mother made from corn husks oh, wow. and stuffed it in canvas bags. And all the kids slept on the floor together. Um, How many siblings do you have? Uh, between my mom and dad, <laughs> there was about 14 of us. Wow. And diabetes has taken a large number out. And that's why when I became diabetic, I resolved that I was not going to let diabetes have me. Uh, didn't have a shot in Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, had, everybody said I was dreaming beyond uh, what was possible. And what was that dream? What did that look like for you at that time? I, I wanted to be a teacher. Okay. And although today I'm a motivator all over the world, I, I, I was the first speaker in South Africa to address a multiracial audience. And so now I'm still a teacher, but just a different word. I'm now a motivator. I used to line up empty chairs in my mother's kitchen and talk to them for hours. They each had a name. I used to even spank them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when I went to South Africa for the first time, my husband said, this is what those empty chairs were all about, my late husband. Today, I think it was being here with Teresa and Mickey. Oh, that's very what sweet. That was all about, mm -hmm. to share a message of hope, a message that if he could bring Dr. Laura Lyons from the back of the bus, in Alabama, to the mountaintops of California, there's no telling what he has in store for the rest of them. I agree with that. We never know. Thank you. Yes. And you know, I was looking at your video, mm -hmm. um, and I was just fascinated by all the things that you said. So your class of 1959. Nine. Mm -hmm. Parker High School in Birmingham. Selected you. Mm -hmm. as the guest keynote speaker for keynote our speaker class for reunion, your class. June 8th, uh, 2017. And how did that make you feel? And first of all, when did you find out that you were the keynote speaker? I, th I think this took them, I think they asked me almost a year ago. Okay. Would I come? They don't have it every year. Mm -hmm. So our next class reunion will be our 60th. Oh, wow. uh, this was our 59th. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, they... And that's when we know, well, how'd you know me? Where'd you know how you know where I was? Mm -hmm. You know, and they said, internet and <laughs> Facebook and you're famous. Uh, I didn't know that because we all feel that what we do is what everybody does. That's None of us true. think that we're different, that we are unique. We just get up every morning and be who we are. Right. And I didn't know that I was all that different. Yeah. Well, who came up with the theme? Look how far we look. How that far was we their thing. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Uh, yes. And then you gave us some information about some of the things that um, you've done over the years. So not only did you want to be a teacher, but you took that and you went even further with it by becoming one of the first, one of the youngest deans. Yes, I, uh, I, was in, I joined the Peace Corps after graduating from Dillard University in New Orleans. Okay. I got to go to Dillard when um, a foundation decided to do a study on oh. black people's ability to learn, whether wow. we could learn. Okay. And I was chosen for that study. 
uh, 20, there were 25 of us. We all graduated with honors from Dillard University. And after I graduated, first I went to Nigeria my junior year uh, as an exchange student. And then I wanted to go back to Nigeria and I joined the Peace Corps and thought they'd send me to Nigeria, but instead they sent me to Turkey. When I received okay. the letter that I'd been accepted in Turkey, I said, I wasn't asking for any food. <laughs> and all my friends said, we know you failed geography. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what was that experience like? It was a good experience. Uh, I would say that I actually learned more in the Peace Corps than I did in college, because in college they teach you academics. Right. In the Peace Corps you learn how to deal with people, you learn how to deal with different cultures, and now I've lived in 13 different countries and I speak five different languages. I can still speak I was buying a rug from a guy the other day, and he said, I'm Turkish. And I said, Mehaba, Narcissus. Wow. <laughs> Turkish. Which, which yeah. means? Hello, how are you? Fantastic. <laughs> wow. And what other languages do you speak? Um, I lived in Germany for five years. I was a counselor for the military dependent schools. Mm -hmm. so I learned a little German. I lived in Greece. I was, a, um, I was there for the Six Day War mm -hmm. and uh, helped to get people back home from uh, Egypt and uh, Israel. Wow. And uh, I lived in the British Virgin Islands mm -hmm. where the hurricane just swept over and I heard that my home there sliding off the hill. <laughs> oh no. But I moved there. Um, I just love to travel. Mm -hmm. I love to be in different places, different people, different cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not afraid of different cultures. So now you went to all of these places through through your time in the Peace Corps. This is how you did a lot no, of the No, diff different uh, different things. I mm -hmm. just came home and applied for like working for the military dependent schools in Germany. It, okay. That had nothing to do with the Peace Corps. Okay. okay. What the Peace Corps taught me mainly was a lack of fear of differences. And then that helped you to expand. Exactly, and, and that's one of the things that I feel that we really need in this country mm -hmm. to not be afraid of someone because they're different because of what they wear on their head or around their neck or what, whatever you know. that may be. We're very, very threatened mm -hmm. by different cultures. And when I got ready to move to the British Virgin Islands, my mom said to me, you don't know the language. You don't know what they do down there, whether they're on horseback or in a car. I said, well, I know where Oakland is and I can always come back. <laughs> well, you know, that sounds like me when I'm talking about directions, which is very basic compared to going to another country and uh, yes. finding your way back home. But mm -hmm. it sounds like it was, they were all amazing experiences. They were. Mm -hmm. uh, and I still have, have my home in many of those places. Mm -hmm. Like I still have a home in Puerto Rico. I still have a home in the British Virgin Islands. Uh, I have a couple of homes uh, in, the, in the Virgin Islands. I just, say we need to expand our thought processes mm -hmm. and feel that we're all human beings and that God put us all here to be mm -hmm. able to accept, to communicate, and to respect mm -hmm. our differences rather than conflict. Very true. And it's so interesting that you say that. And we live here in the United States, which is supposed to be one of the most evolved mm -hmm. countries but we keep going back to the same issue over and over again. So when you say you grew up in a time when it was challenging for blacks, mm -hmm. and then now we are 50, more, yeah. 50 plus years later and you're still having the same conversation, what comes to mind for you? Um, look how far I've come. Mm -hmm. I have one son, he's 46, he'll be 46 on the October 10th. He's a screenwriter and um, a producer down there in L.A. But when he was younger, I took him to Birmingham. Okay. When he was about five, six years old. And he runs to the front of the front seat on the bus. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, do you know how many people died so, so you could have that front seat? Um, I wandered away from my mother one time in a Piggly Wiggly. Mm -hmm. She was paying at the cash register and I wandered over to a white water fountain, you know, shiny. I'm a little kid. I was, you know, and I'm sipping the water and the clerk runs over to me and slaps me as hard as she could. And my mother apologized and 
and said, ma'am, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she's rushing me out of the store. And I said, mom, why would you apologize to somebody for slapping me when you don't slap me? She said, you violated the law. There was a sign above that water fountain that said, for whites only. You could have gone to jail. I resolved that day, and the majority of my family were illiterate. My father dropped out of school in the fourth grade. My mm -hmm. mother got pregnant with me when she was 15. And I decided that day, I'm going to become a scholar. Never wow. again will someone have to slap me because I can't read a sign. Okay. And we, my girlfriends and I used to sit on the curb outside and I used to talk to them and read to them from the street lights. Mm -hmm. And I would tell them, oh, one day I'm going to have a home like this and I'm going to have a doctorate and I'm going, and they'd get up and walk away. They'd say, you're a dreamer. they say, you think you white. Isn't uh, that interesting? And I said, if being educated and successful means that the white, then you can call me white, I'll, I'll go for that. And even today, when I pull up in front of one of my apartment buildings, uh, the contractors or the applicants will be standing there. And when I get out, they'll say, we're looking for the landlord. And I say, oh, I am the landlord. They say, no, 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 no. We're looking for the white man that owns this building. Wow. And sometimes I take it personally, okay. and I used to get insulted. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, my son said to me the other day, Mom, just be grateful that you're a landlord. Well, I kind of like, it appeals to me the idea that um, you can kind of smile inside mm -hmm. because you know you're the owner, you're the, yes, you're the person exactly. that they're looking yeah. for. And then there's that other part of not me, just me, but I'm sure a lot of other people who you say to yourself, Really, is this where we are today? Is this still where we are today? Well, success is an attitude, and you're going to display one of my T-shirts that says that. The attitude is I can either feel like I'm a victim or I can feel victorious. I can feel that uh, I've been oppressed or I can feel like, look at me now. I'm an overcomer. I am triumphant. Mm -hmm. I am grateful to a good and righteous God who brought me from the back of the bus to own a bus. Mm -hmm. And he's told me, and I promised him, that dear God, I got down on my knees at my graduation at Dillard, mm -hmm. and I said, you let me make it, and I'm going to reach back and try to make it with every, help everybody I know make it. When I drive down the streets and there are people standing out there begging, I have in my little dashboard on my 88 Honda, I always have money to hand them and I hand them my business card, always, no matter where they are on the street. And people say, oh, they're just gonna, you, I handed a woman $20 the other day and they say, she's just gonna go buy some uh, bad stuff, some alcohol, right. some cigarettes. I said, if you're homeless, you need that. <laughs> That's a different take on it, that's for sure. <laughs> that is definitely and who am I to sure. judge what you spend it on? Right. You know? and, and if you feel free of heart to give that $20, which a lot of times people don't these days, because there's always that sense of someone trying to get over on someone else. But I guarantee so. you this, and I promise you this, I've never handed anybody a $20 bill that within an hour or two it didn't come back to me some kind of way. Mm -hmm. Oh, I believe you, because mm -hmm. I totally believe in the mm -hmm. you get what you give philosophy. Of My the greatest belief systems are, number one, mm -hmm. life is a journey. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some hard times. And you can't have the sunshine without the rain. That's true. But I also believe that we can defy all the odds. Mm -hmm. I was born with all the odds against me. Black, poor, female in Alabama in 42. I didn't have a shot. Toilet in the backyard, toilet paper was a Sears Roebuck catalog, uh, yeah, sharing all, with neighbors, mm -hmm. um, didn't the, have a shot. Oh, I'm sorry, all the stories that we hear were your life is what you're exactly. saying. Exactly, well, now. 1942 mm -hmm. in Alabama. It couldn't get any more difficult than that. So how old was the little girl who had the dream that she was going to be a scholar? 
How old were you then when you were reading those signs to your friends? Um, I started believing uh, the, when I went to school. When I started first grade, mm -hmm. I loved teachers. Uh, and I had good teachers. And in those days, black teachers were not even required to have a BA degree to teach in a black school. They didn't re start requiring them to get a BA until the schools integrated. Okay. But my teachers, although they didn't have a BA, they were dedicated. They were caring. Mm -hmm. If you didn't get it, they make you stay after school and they stay there with you, uh, which is what I do today. I don't okay. flunk students mm -hmm. because if you flunk, I flunk. Okay. My job is to empower you. Mm -hmm. And if you're failing, that means I'm, somehow I'm failing as a teacher. If you don't get it, if you don't hear me, just like your audience tonight mm -hmm. who's listening to me, if they don't get it, mm -hmm. if they reject what I'm saying, then there's something way that I'm saying it uh, that next time I want it to be different. I don't think you'll have that problem. <laughs> I don't think you'll have that difficulty. What yeah. I want the listeners to feel is empowered okay. to know that, uh, again, you, there's, every, things that are for you are greater than the things that are against you. I agree with One that. One of my best ministers is uh, Joel Osteen. Mm -hmm. And every Sunday morning, well, I try to listen to him three or four times on a Sunday because what he's teaching us is you can beat this. It didn't come to stay. It came to pass. One of the worst things that's happened to me in my life was definitely the loss of my husband mm -hmm. of 30 years, Ed Lyons. He was a very, very, very good man. And I took him for granted. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I thought all men were like that. Mm -hmm. Now I have to fight with him to open the door for me, to pull the chair out at the table for me. I walked out to one that I've been dating and I said, does this dress make me look fat? And he <laughs> you said, really said that, <laughs> like the what, commercial. <laughs> and he said, you don't want me to lie, do you? Oh my goodness. Well, we were having, it's funny you bring this up because we were having, you and I were having this interesting conversation about mm -hmm. you, you are 74. Mm -hmm. Current 75. 75, mm -hmm. and you are online dating. I am. I'm an online dating, fan, dating fanatic. <laughs> yeah. And you just blew me away with that statement completely. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us what is that like for you? Well, it can be fun. Uh, the greatest thing about online dating is there's a delete button, and you hit it. Okay. I've broken mine several times. <laughs> Uh, the man I've been dating recently, the way I met him, is I posted an ad on Craigslist for a man to take me to see Kenny G at Yoshi's. Okay. 33 men responded to my ad, and all of them asked me, do you have the tickets? And I said, I can do bad all by myself. <laughs> Why would I go with you if I bought the ticket? And this man that I've been dating, he... Uh, bought the tickets, and I've been going out him with him now for about mm. four years or so. Uh, we have our conflicts because the number one thing that I want from a man mm -hmm. is attention okay. and consistency. Mm -hmm. Don't see me on Sunday, and then I'll hear from you again until next Sunday. But they tell me that at 75 that I'm expecting too much okay. because 25-year-olds don't, don't expect, expect that. enough. Right? Well, I say if you want quality, if you want what I bring to the table, intellect, compassion, sensitivity, caring, commitment, there's a price for that. And men tell me, date you because they want to cut to the chase. So, uh, oh, no, 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 no. You have to take me to the movies. You have to take me to Yoshi's. You, have to take me to... you ain't no teenager. I said, that's what you say. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I said. Touche to the yeah. young ladies out there listening. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> I am so grateful. Not only has God allowed me to live to be 75, to be sitting here with Teresa today, but uh, I don't have to take pills. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have my hip removed. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have my legs or toes or, you know. And I had all those diseases. Mm -hmm. I had five diseases. And I went to a health institute in Puerto Rico and Wigmore Natural Health Institute and reversed them by changing my mm -hmm. diet. Mm -hmm. I tried to eat only fruits and vegetables in their natural state. 
I also encourage people to eat for their blood type. Right. So if you're an A, mm -hmm. you can look that up. I carry it around with me. My only point to you, Teresa, today is defy the odds. Beat the system. Okay. Overcome everything that's trying to overcome you. For example, right now I heard that my house is slipping off the hill in the Virgin Islands because of the storm. Okay. Well, a lot of people are calling me and wondering if I'm depressed and so forth. I'm lucky to own a home in the British Virgin Islands, and it's insured. Okay. Okay. So if Irma takes it, mm -hmm. Nagico got to step up. <laughs> Well, I'm sure they'll be listening to you and a lot of other homeowners out there. Yes. It, it is a terrible situation. One thing I do want to, would like to know is what is God trying to teach us? Mm -hmm. I do believe that in everything that happens to us, there's a lesson. Um, one of the other things that I like to share with people is managing money. Mm -hmm. I bought my first home in New York when I was 23 years old with That's my only. Peace Corps returning money. The Peace Corps gave me a $2,000 readjustment allowance, and I took $2,000 in 1963, was a whole lot of money okay. in New York, and mm -hmm. I bought my first home. When my friends were all buying cars, uh, buying jewelry, mm -hmm. shopping at Nordstrom's, to this day, I have Nordstrom clothes, but I got them from Goodwill. I, I heard you say that in, in your video. <laughs> I drive a 1988 Honda, mm -hmm. which my mechanic tells me, unless you're going to buy a new one, you might as well keep this and let me fix it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never had a car note in my life. Really? Never, ever, ever? Never. Ever. I will never buy anything on installment payments except a mortgage. Okay. I've never had a credit card. Ever. Really? I don't believe in them. Because... If you can't afford it, don't buy it. Good point. And when well, you, you should speak to a lot of Americans about that right but, now. But you know, and, I, and, and I, I saw a woman the other day, she has a SUV Mercedes, and she lives in a closet. And I'm saying, why would you want a SUV Mercedes? She's always for my grandkids. And I said, you need to be paying on those grandkids' education. Right. You, know, you, you don't even want to teach them that as a habit. Mm -hmm. you know? People see me in my flip-flops and my 88 Honda and, you know, my uh, right now stained teeth, and they think I'm poor. Mm -hmm. But the decision is, do you want to look rich okay. or do you want to be rich? Well, now, you know, you have a lot of people who the answer to that question, to both of those questions is, yes, I want to look rich and yes, I want to be rich. So... It's very difficult to have both. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think that, really? Um, Unless you Oprah. I was, she was the first person <laughs> that came to my mind as soon as you said that yeah. because she's managed to do it and to um, maintain some grace about it. Yeah. And she's not exactly. flashy with, exactly. with it. And she is a big uh, uh, proponent for giving, she has, for giving exactly. back to people. Exactly. So what do you say to, like the, you were talking about um, mentoring the young girls who need jobs. So what do you say to those young ladies and to the young men mm -hmm. about um, changing um, our attitudes about what we do with money these days? And because there are so mm -hmm. many people in debt and that is, that seems to be the, the going thing in America these days. You have to decide between what you want and what you need. Mm -hmm. you know? If I hadn't made the decisions that I made back when I was 23, my Social Security is nowhere near enough money to support the lifestyle that I, that I want. Mm -hmm. So I, to this day, mm -hmm. I make a decision to buy what I need as opposed to what I want. I would like very much, before we close, to share a poem out of my book. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and before you do that, I want to show um, mm -hmm. people your T-shirt mm -hmm. and read that for us. Success is, is an, an attitude. attitude, and it truly is. Mm -hmm. Attitude is 80% of success. Mm -hmm. If you're defiant, if you're rebellious, if you always got to have the last word. Mm -hmm. If you got to show off, yeah. uh, it's going to affect you. Mm -hmm. And I, what I do is let other people win sometimes, even when I'm right. 
Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. My well, book, Life, Lion's Guide to the Career Jungle, took me five years to write this book okay. and uh, all the ways that we sabotage ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this is a poem from a famous man who uh, was my mentor, Les Brown. Life is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Meet it. Life is a gift. Accept it. Life is an adventure. We got to learn to dare it. Life is a sorrow. Overcome it. Life is a tragedy. Face it, life is a game, play it. Life is a mystery unfolded. Life is an opportunity to be taken. Life is a journey completed. Life is a song, sing it. Life is a promise, fulfill it. Life is a beauty, praise it. Life is a struggle, fight it. Life is a goal, achieve it. Life is a puzzle, solve it. And the good news, Teresa and Mickey, when God breathed the breath of life into our nostrils, he empowered us to meet this challenge. Oh, that's beautiful. That's fabulous. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, I, I want to conclude with one last story. A woman uh, woke up one morning with her boyfriend of 10 years, and he said to, he woke up and he looked at her and he says, Sweetheart, last night I had a dream that I asked you to marry me. What do you think that means? She said, it means you have more sense in your sleep than you do when you are awake. And I'm here to thank God and to thank you that he empowered me with more sense when I'm awake. Oh, I love it. And I love sharing this with the audience. And I'm online, my website, my email, nothing is private. And if there's anybody out there that I can help, that I can empower, who I can pass on my message of hope, please feel free to contact Dr. Laura Lyons. We will do that. Thank and you. And it has been a pleasure having you here with us today. Thank you. And we must do this again because your life is just so amazing. There are so many things that we just touched, the, scratched the surface. So I would love to talk more about how you, how did you just, you know, how did you decide that you wanted to get your PhD, things like that. And we must talk about your um, change in diet and how you mm -hmm. beat having, well, I don't know if beat would be the right word. I'm sure some people would write me if I say that, but <laughs> how you changed your lifestyle, your eating habits, and mm -hmm. that improved your health. So things like that. So we would love to have you back on the show. And then I would love to hear how dating is 74, compares to dating at 25. I would mm. like to know about that. <laughs> hey, it's all about defining the odds. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you have definitely done that. And what yes. a fabulous example you have uh, presented to not just young adults, but to the next generation as well. So It never occurred to me, although I had my own TV show in the islands, I was called the Oprah Winfrey of the Caribbean minus the money. Uh, and uh, it never occurred to me that I would have an opportunity to be here today. Well, we're uh, glad you were able to make it. you and share. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much. I've been your host, Teresa Adams, and we are here with Dr. Laura Lyons, and we are thrilled that you could be here with us today, and we must have you back on the show again. And thank, thank you. you so much for being here. It's my pleasure and my honor. Thank you. Thank you.